Hello everybody, I am Red Griffin4987 aka Adrian Theos and today we're playing an old school game from GOG.com, one of my old school favorites. I haven't played it in years but it's uh, Tex Murphy under a killing moon and we're gonna start a new game here and uh, I apologize right now if the resolution does not meet your your requirements because uh, it's in 64 or uh, 640 by 420 resolution and I don't think there's any way I can fix it so I doubt this is going to be made in full screen um, for you guys on YouTube but I will try to expand it but we will see where things go anyways let's start this here Adrian Theos enter uh, okay. Oh, Click. they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Is that Who Darth Vader? Who have got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. Uh, afraid so, sir. <laughs> what about yes, Spade Murphy. or Marlowe? Uh, dead, sir. <laughs> Isn't dead. there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. Oh, great. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. News of the day. That's news of the world. What the hell? As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer's troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. World but their domination. Are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. Oh, kind of a creepy quote there. And that's a creepy castle. And let's walk towards the castle, the creepy castle, because why not? Seems normal to me. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, what's going on here? Omanaki ala soto. Statue. The moon is full. Our ritual is ready to proceed. Yes. Under the moon. Access Software presents Under a Killing Moon. Brian Keith. Mar Margaret Kidder Russell Means I hope I'm saying these right And the voice of James Earl Jones Yes, Darth Vader, isn't it? Executive producer Bruce Carver Directed by Chris Jones San Francisco, 2042 A.D. In the moonlight, oh my New God, San it's a Francisco DeLorean! Sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconia. <laughs> An island of hollow beauty, surrounded by a sea of radiation. Oh, lovely radiation! Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, awesome but I don't. 
I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute in the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective. Or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Oh, what a way to spend now money. Now it's past midnight, and I'm bourbon. staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a run-down part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. No, not the bourbon! My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? You don't know the half of it, sir. Oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. Geritol? So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm gonna move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. <laughs> nice retirement plan. Getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. Ooh, disturbing no, image. I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Oh. Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> Worse, actually. Well, depends. <laughs> what day is it anyway today? Saturday? It is Saturday. Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. Oh, <laughs> great. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life. Ouch. No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> no, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out. But that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Ah, like I said, I'll be leaving soon. And I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> <laughs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. Going through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. Yeah. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter That's how smart. bad things are, they can always get worse. Ain't that the truth. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people can't live with success? Huh? Uh, maybe. What's well, I it to can you? live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. <laughs> right. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever, betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. you got to find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now, now, listen. Before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on. And you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's going to find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. I don't need any more strain on my conscience. I guess I'll be sleeping with the fishes. Oh. <laughs> you know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. Don't smoke, kids. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's why. Let's remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. 
I'll send you a postcard. I look forward to it. Oh. Da, 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 da. Under a killing moon. Day one. Cuffing up phlegm. Cuffing up phlegm. Really? Phlegm. What kind of name is that? So last night, after 15 years, the colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. And boy, do I really I suck at throwing cards in my hat. Contrary to what the colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy. Well, he really does suck at throwing those cards in that hat. Wow. Oh, well, press space bar to walk around. Okay, space bar. Oh my god. Whoa. Space. Wow, these controls. Oh my god. Alright, what is this? Look. My gun. I love it so much! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Great great grandpa Murphy made it through the depression by teaching cha cha lessons to rich older women. He made thousands before the authorities found out he had no formal training. Oh, nice. <laughs> These controls are weird, I just gotta say. Alright, what, what about this? The office was actually a dance studio before I moved in. And Latin dancing is a Murphy family tradition. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay. Alright, uh... What's this? Another pile of garbage. There just aren't enough hours in the day. Huh. That's a perfect bed for a destitute P.I. Small, lightweight, no sheets required. No sheets required. I call this painting, uh, The Big Spill. <laughs> the Big Spill? What's that? Well, since the building inspector has only one eye and no depth perception, the hotel manager painted fire extinguishers in all the apartments. Saved them a bundle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he painted them. This pure mountain spring water is indispensable, literally. I'm out of paper cups. <laughs> I'm out of paper cups. Wow, these graphics, I just gotta say, are amazing. Not really. Uh, what about this? The Scotch guard that Rudy's upholstering service put on my office chairs will stand up to anything. And I oughta know. I oughta know. What that means. The Scotch guard that Rudy's oh. upholstering service put on my office chairs will stand up to anything. And I oughta know. Alright. Let's press some buttons, shall we? D. Okay, that's down apparently. W. That's a wall. A. a S. What is that? 